Hey guys, Kaz Pierce. I thought I'd just take you through the piece that you can see on my work table here, which is a piece I did a couple of days ago that I've decided is going to be painted over. It is too mud-like, not enough contrast, but its biggest problem is that when I did the pour, I didn't use enough paint on the canvas and in stretching the paint by tilting to try to cover the canvas, I've overstretched. And the result that you can kind of see is that I've lost that really round, plump, cellular texture. And I've ended up with all the cells that should have been round, have ended up quite deformed. So the texture is not okay. The... Um, contrast in the colour in the piece itself is not okay so time to paint over it. Um, after having decided I really didn't like it I did actually also then drop a glove on it while it was still wet and you can kind of see bottom left corner there that very um, mauvey looking patch that I'm just going over now. Uh, that's where as I've lifted the glove, the half dry paint that was a bit thick has kind of curled up on itself and now I've got some 3D lumpy bits. So I then had to smooth that all over with the palette knife. And obviously at that point, the painting is ruined and it's 100% definite we will be painting over. Up until that point, I was going to keep it um, and maybe paint over it if I had time, but now we've decided it's a definite. Um, it's like one of those contrary children born into adversity for which everything goes wrong. And even to the point where at one point um, trying to just move it around in my house, get it out of my way, uh, it was just about dry. I've lent it up against the wall and didn't it transfer purple paint onto my wall. Like <laughs> just everything that could have gone wrong with it, it kind of has. So more than happy to use this nice sized canvas and paint over and hopefully get a better result. And of course this time be really mindful of making sure that I'm pouring with enough paint so that um, I maintain that fluidity um, as well as stretch everything out well enough to develop the cells um, get a really good texture that I like, but get the paint thin enough so that when it dries it doesn't crack. So it is um, a bit of a science. Having enough paint to have that fluidity, getting rid of a lot of it so that the paint isn't too heavy on the canvas at the end. And in amongst all of that, while it's all happening, um, be considering composition and texture. So once again in the colour scheme that I'm working with for this particular installation that I'm producing pieces for, so it's the violet, um, black, white and then a lustrous silver. And with all the lustrous paints what I'm finding is um, they, they actually look really quite dull when you're using them when they're wet it's when they dry that they really do shine and stand out so here you'll see I've done my pour and I've gone not enough paint so I've made up another cup to make sure I get enough paint on the canvas um, this was a really a really good workshop um, I, I actually poured this piece in front of a couple of people who who'd come to do a workshop with me. And it, this piece in particular turned out really, really well. It's a, it's a cloud pour, a ring pour, but a cloud pour because the white that we're using in the cup is the mix, is, pardon me, mixed up from um, acrylic enamel 50-50 with artist white paint. And torching here to release some air bubbles but the way I like to think of this is actually to bring any of those bubbles or those cells if you like the beginning of the cell formation to the surface 
while the paint is quite compact um, and then you get to stretch them out and make them huge so very worthwhile so I'm going to just um, leave you now to watch and be mesmerized by the really fun part which is tilting the canvas and watching the paint slide and the composition and the texture develop. <laughs>